So our lab works on ion channels, which are proteins in excitable tissue that code and send information. And the specific project I'm going to talk about today is on um, a mutation, inherited mutation for a, a skeletal muscle in neuromuscular disorder called hypokalemic periodic paralysis. And uh, some of the collaborators from ISU um, and also from Germany are shown on this slide. Um, so we're funded by NIH and um, work a lot with INBRI within the Department of Biological Sciences here. So a big picture is that excitable tissues, so mus muscle fibers in, you know, uh, that move bones, muscle fibers of the heart, neurons of the brain, neurons of the peripheral nervous system, and endocrine cells um, use rapid changes in the polarity of voltage across their membrane, rapid changes in their membrane potential in the form of action potentials to send that information, to get other cells to do what they need to do. Is the information transfer is carried by electrical, these electrical signals. And so we study one of the proteins that is in, involved in these action potential signals um, and with a focus on skeletal muscle fiber voltage-gated sodium channels, which are important for the, what do you call the rising phase of the action potential. Um, so this <clears throat> channel, like other channels, can be described in terms of state transitions. Um, and so I refer to this as the Toblerone model, where channels, voltage-gated sodium channels in this case, go from a closed state, the membrane potential is very negative, the cell is at rest and not doing anything electrically, from a closed state, in response to a more positive potential will activate or open and then inactivate. And in some cases, channels inactivate directly from closed states without opening. So those are the three tiers or boundaries of the Toblerone, if you will. Um, so opening is associated with you know, strong depolarization and action potentials. Uh, closed state inactivation um, is a focus of our lab because we think it is a target in disease, even though there's no action potential associated with it. The diseases that affect channel function um, are known as channelopathies. Um, and so there are many of these. Um, I'm showing a, a few of these here for skeletal muscle and in the Diagram on the left, these are the, these are the four domains of the channel that are shown three-dimensionally looking from the top on the right. So each of the domains has six transmembrane segments. And the fourth of those, which is colored green for, ar for arginine residues and purple for lysine residues on the right, that's the voltage sensor. There are charged residues that move and indirectly open or close or inactivate the pore. So it's not surprising that mutations in those residues of the S4 voltage sensing segments are very important in channelopathy diseases. So we're, I'm gonna focus today, let me, let me actually annotate how interesting. So the one I'm gonna focus on today is a tryptophan mutation in the first domain, domain S4 segment. So this is R222W. We're now, we're now working on the glycine residue as well in another project. Okay, so, oopsie, oopsie. Um, so I'm gonna unannotate and hopefully I can go, yeah, phew. So our, we do this with electrophysiology. Um, I just gave a little talk to my um, lab on some of the protocols we use. Um, so on the left is a view of a microscope looking um, at a little frog egg that's expressing channels. 
and we use the micro, we use microelectrodes then and voltage clamp protocols to look at the sodium currents associated with that channel function. And in some cases, we actually can block those currents with the puffer fish toxin and look directly at the gaining machinery. That's for another day. But you can see some of the sodium currents there. So we then, we then take uh, various protocols to isolate those state transitions in the Toblerone. We want, maybe we want to look at open state activation. Maybe we want to look at the reverse, which we call deactivation. Maybe we want to look at recovery of channels from inactivation. So <clears throat> the parameters are shown here for inactivation. I'm showing um, four different sets of data in which the blue is the wild type, HNAV 1.4 is the wild type human sodium voltage dependent channel in skeletal muscle. And so in A, that's the probability curve for inactivation. The more depolarized, the more likely the channels are inactivated as current compared to max goes to zero. So we would, we would look, we compare that with the mutation in hypoclinic periodic paralysis, and the curve is shifted to the left, channels are more likely to inactivate. That's consistent with hypoexcitability. The other three panels, B, C, and D, are kinetic measurements of entry into inactivation in B from closed state, in C from open state, and then D, recovery from that state. So that's nice, and we could make some statements about whether or not those effects are consistent with the disease, and we did. But um, what I thought you guys would be interested in, it, um, and more of a, a broader biological um, application is, 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 is using models. And so we put the results of those uh, experiments, the parameters for inactivation into a model of the skeletal muscle fiber membrane and compared a wild type action potential in simulation versus the same model in which the mutation parameters were put in. And the question was, does this look like what happens in a patient? So on the left are all of the kinetic parameters for wild type in black or mutation R222W in red across the voltages of inactivation. Thank you. <laughs> and we're good. This is the last slide. So um, those parameters then in that, in that way can be, it can be extracted as rate constants for the, the model and, and we can make a simulated action potential. So on the right, the actual patient recording, this was done in Germany, the, the larger action potential is from a control patient and the smaller one is from a person with that mutation. On the right is the simulation that Landon Bayless Edwards did with these experiments um, that she did and I helped with, where and Paula Arenzi helped with, and we were able to recapitulate the, the patient um, attenuation of the action potential in simulation. So there we go. Math actually explains biology. Sometimes. Thank you.